uh, QNU. We are a team of uh, uh, optical engineers, hardware engineers, network specialists, and being mentored by Sri M.T. Karunakaran, my colleague. He was also supposed to uh, attend the seminar, but because of ill health, he is not able to. And uh, we are uh, the first Indian company to actually uh, deliver a product on quantum technology. So quantum uh, key distribution is one of the most mature field of quantum information processing or quantum technology. And we at India have actually done a product on it. And uh, we have al also sold it to uh, one of the Saudi companies. And we look forward to much more. <laughs> Thank you. So, uh, Actually, uh, this slide doesn't need much uh, uh, to speak on because we already know that the present situation of uh, classical uh, security, it's, it's not, um, yeah, I mean, I should say robust, but not today, right? And we have seen many uh, speakers talk about it. So here, uh, the word classical, see, information has to be carried. It needs a physical medium to carry. So the classical security here is actually dependent on uh, macroscopic bodies to carry information, right? So that's what I mean by classical security and classical algorithms which run on classical computer. So and now we all know that we need uh, security, it is needed by defense, it is needed by government and of course even a common person um, needs security. We know about uh, uh, profiling case, right? And it is very dangerous. So we need to protect our information. So, uh, if you try to um, understand what actually cryptography is. So, suppose I uh, want to send a message to um, Sai Krishna, an ISP. So, I will put that uh, message in a box. I will put a lock in it and I will put a key. I have to have a key. So, I will lock the message with the uh, key, right? So, now that key, that lock is an algorithm called an encryption algorithm. And the key, I and Sai Krishna has to meet in person and share that key. Now this is a very uh, problem which, uh, which is not solvable in classical physics, this key distribution problem. And uh, the best uh, for highly confidential uh, interactions, what we do is we uh, either meet in person or send it through a digital, secure digital link. So there is no solution to it. So now when Sai Krishna receives it, he already has a pre-shared key carried by a physical entity and then he uh, opens the lock decryption, uh, decryption algorithm and reads the message. So what we are trying to solve is the key distribution problem. This quantum key distribution is the only solution to classical key distribution. If you secure and your encryption or your, your complete security is as good as the security of the key, right? So now there are two types of uh, cryptography. Um, see, cryptography is as old as civilization, from the Spartans to the Caesar cipher. We have seen so many uh, cryptographic algorithms which are there for a long time and then again died out because of uh, the advancement of science and technology. So uh, they, they all have been uh, symmetric algorithms in nature. What is symmetric algorithm? Message and key are of same length to satisfy the entropy. So uh, the, this is a symmetric algorithm which is used for uh, World War II, uh, the one-time pad. That's the information theoretic security uh, secure algorithm. But uh, what was the problem? They printed the key page twice. So the key was used twice. Uh, that's the reason it was broken. So uh, symmetric uh, cryptography is the best cryptography. It has a problem or the pragmatic approach is uh, not feasible because of the key length and the randomness required. And the second is the asymmetric key cryptography. All the algorithms in the present public key infrastructure is based on asymmetric key cryptography, which means I and Sai Krishna will have different keys. Mine will be a private key and his will be a public key. They will not be same. That's the problem. Now this algorithm depends upon mathematical complexity. So all the algorithms in the public key infrastructure is actually based on mathematically complex problem called computational security, assuming that, um, for example, yeah, I'll come up to the next RSA, which is being used, uh, which is a very uh, fundamental ingredient in all the banking and all the uh, cryptographic algorithms. RSA is based on prime factorization. 
So now the prime factorization can be solved by a particular algorithm which will take millions of years in a classical computer. So the advantage I have is my data life, um, long shelf life, I'm safe. Now the problem with uh, today's uh, new technology is coming up, which is quantum technology, which uh, is actually threatening the existence of these kind of algorithms. So we know that the public key uh, infrastructure, uh, the key management system has, of course, let me not go into the detail, but storing um, and then uh, maintaining the keys, of course. So the thing which we have to understand is the RSA and the hashing algorithms, which are being used for uh, uh, the data protection. So now uh, TLS uh, 1.3 was updated in 2018. They removed RSA because RSA is not forward secure. So similarly, um, so why it is not secure? Because Shor's algorithm, which can now be run on a quantum computer, yeah, so there is some, something more I should add, but later, so which can be run on a quantum computer will actually be able to solve this uh, problem. Then we have bankings are using SHA2 and MD5. There are good banks which still use MD5 for hashing. Now hashing uh, is used basically for authentication, but uh, MD5 is declared insecure for many years and since still it has been, it's still being used. So the idea is to say that the classical cryptography uh, umbrella is not actually giving us the uh, right protection in today's uh, 2019, right? So again, um, yeah, here I would like to uh, mention that uh, the previous speaker had uh, mentioned 81% of the breaches are because of stolen or weak passwords, both, right? So the quantum technology can solve both the problems. You will not be able to copy it, no data breaches, you will not be able to steal it. Uh, the, the passwords, the weak passwords can be made uh, truly random passwords. So, um, yeah, the different encryption algorithms, they use random numbers. If they are weak, then it doesn't give you any protection. So, yes, 81% 81, 81 of the attacks in the financial sector is due to, as mentioned, stolen or weak passwords. Breaches affected financial organizations is 24%, then just imagine what is the security of the other application areas. If banking itself has 24% of uh, breaches, right? And of course, 75% of them gets undetected. So what is the problem? The problem is the present cryptographic algorithms or the ingredients of cryptography are based on computational security. One, they can be backdoors. We know there are backdoors. And that can be exploited uh, for, um, by nations also. And uh, so how does that backdoor exist? So any mathematically uh, uh, algorithm will have certain or some kind of backdoors. Vulnerabilities on physical link. As I said, classical security. Information carrying is a macroscopic body which can be cloned or copied. So uh, it is actually the uh, Achilles heel in cryptography. Then uh, you have to refresh the session keys. For example, AES, you have to refresh them at a particular time. And so you need uh, keys also, in, it has to be generated at that rate. So we are trying to address these problems. So now, do you want to make your business resilient against these catastrophes? Is what now we'll discuss. So now let us hear what the scientists have got to say about this. So um, he's my uh, PhD boss, Professor Nirvan Pathak at GIT Institute Noida. And he had given me uh, Simon Singh's The Code Book. In that code book, uh, it was written that, he, in that book actually it discusses all the cryptographic uh, uh, developments from uh, ancient to modern times. And it is mentioned that quantum cryptography will be the end of all the cryptographies. And the war will be won by code makers and not code breakers. So that's a good thing. So he says he is closely working with government and defense and involved in many projects, initiatives by the government. And he says that the interest on crypto uh, cryptanalysis is very high at the moment as quantum computers can be used to break some of the classical cryptograms. It's high time to invest on ideas related to quantum cryptography. Uh, Professor S. Uh, Shom Shubra uh, Bondopadhyay, 
uh, he's at Bose Institute. He was one of the first persons to actually start working on quantum uh, foundations in quantum mechanics in India. And he has uh, 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 co-authored with the pioneers of quantum secure communication people. He, and he has a very good understanding of the subject. And he says that, uh, so I will read the last line. This is why an experimentally viable quantum cryptography protocol stands out in our time as it ensures unconditional security, bracket, information theoretic security, for the secret communication of messages. So I was having a call with him yesterday and he said that, see, why you are different is, while people still are trying to do, academicians are trying to do, you have actually done it. So you know how cryptography works, quantum cryptography works, what are the different classical cryptographic algorithms required to enable this? Because this is actually a multidisciplinary uh, uh, subject. So with their blessings, let me move forward. QKD is loading. So now let us understand how it is a qubit is, a different, is different from a classical bit. See, in classical, um, we use bit, binary information. It's either 0 or it's 1 two distingu uh, distinguishable states, like I can either stand up or I can sit down, distinguishable states. So, uh, for example, now if you have an AND gate to copy this, uh, it will always give you a zero. So I'm mentioning a copy gate called AND, okay? Now, how do you have a quantum gate so, or a, a qubit? A qubit uses a quantum information uh, signs to do processing on the information and it encodes the information on a quantum system. So, um, for example, IBM quantum computer, they use uh, superconducting qubits. We at QNU, since we are in the business of quantum communication, we use photons called flying qubits. So, uh, in that qubit, you can store information in zero, one, and both of them together. So, that gives you quantum parallelism. So that is a reason that your, uh, ex gives you an exponential increase in your uh, capacity, information uh, processing capacity. So uh, this is actually psi equal to A0 plus B1. A and B are complex numbers. Uh, square of mod of A and B has to be equal to 1. So these are the probabilities of occurrence of a logic 0 and occurrence of a logic 1. So now this is a circuit from the IBM quantum computer. So here is a Hadamard gate. H is called a Hadamard gate. So there is a particular way we represent uh, or we do information processing in a quantum system. Uh, each gate can be uh, written as a mathematical operation. Now this is beautiful because since I can do everything mathematically, I can also model an eavesdropping attack mathematically. So I know how much information is being uh, given out uh, during eavesdropping and I can compress it and I can shrink it using some hashing algorithms to take care of that leakage. So here we have a Hadamard gate and we measure a system. So using a Hadamard gate, I have created uh, A0 plus B1 with A equal to 1 by root 2. Means half of the times, if you try to look at it, it will collapse to a logic 0 and half of the times, you, it will collapse to a logic 1. So I ran it in a quantum computer and since there are probabilities, so 50% of the time it was giving me logic 0 and 49.6% it was giving me logic 1. So if, a, if somebody tries to look at the qubit, it will either be in 0 or it be at 1. So it will collapse to one of these states. So that is the beauty of a qubit. So now uh, quantum computers, much talked about. So uh, there are big players who are actually building quantum computers. Um, IBM and Google are, uh, are working on superconducting uh, qubits. They, uh, there the temperature needed is actually near to absolute 0, which is colder than the vacuum in space. Otherwise, uh, it destroys the coherence of the qubits. So now people have asked that how do you maintain this for the flying qubit? Because you are sending it across a fiber, a standard telecommunication fiber. So uh, there are different properties and there are different um, uh, measures we have to take so that the uh, photon which is generated uh, in, my, uh, in one node is carried to the, maybe to the ISB. If I have a sender, in, uh, uh, in Avasa and the receiver at ISB. So I sent the single photons generated from here to ISB using a standard telecommunication fiber. So um, there are two algorithms which we have to take care of. One is the Shor's algorithm and the other is the uh, Grover's algorithm. Now the, the beauty is the Shor's algorithm 
solves the factorization problem in polynomial time. Means in, uh, with, uh, it can be done within few seconds, which takes millions of years in a quantum, com in a classical computer. So it has given you an exponential increase. So that is the reason why now RSA has been started getting removed from all the algorithms. Then second is it gives you a quadratic speed in uh, data uh, in data search, right? So if you want, for example, the AES uh, symmetric algorithms, the crypt analysis on AES algorithm, if you use uh, Grover's uh, quantum algorithm on that, on that it will give you some quadratic uh, speed up. So it can be used for crypt analysis. So um, now if you look at the table, now this has been given by the global standardization bodies that the strength of a on a classical computer uh, of these RSA uh, 1024, 2048, 3072, and what is the corresponding strength once a quantum computer is there? It is actually zero. And AES, it is uh, by square root of two, you know. So uh, it's 120, for 256, it becomes 128. So like that. So that means that if I go on increasing the length of key in my AES, I may be secure for some time. But then again, your system is classical. How much can you process? So that there will be again a limit. So, uh, so these are the threats from a quantum computer. Status of a quantum computer. Now here we can look at the last line, the D wave, which is actually a quantum simulator. They have factorized a large number. And there are nations like China and all, they are trying to use, uh, to find algorithms, how to factorize a large number using lesser number of logical qubits. Because it is difficult to maintain uh, the qubits or to do calculations on a qubit for a long time. So this is the research which is happening. And uh, you can see that the, uh, one of the group from China, they have uh, factorized a large number using only three logical qubits. And of course, there are bigger, uh, big players, Intel, uh, Rigetti. They are all trying to uh, build a super quantum computer, a crypto-cracking machine, basically. So now, what is a quantum key distribution? I had sh shown you the basic uh, cryptographic architecture, right? So quantum key distribution is nothing but sending the keys through a uh, dedicated uh, fiber. I'm sending my keys through a dedicated fiber and then uh, doing the algorithms. I need to communicate also. So basically, the sender and receiver will have two links, a classical link and a quantum link. Both can be a fiber. One can be an ethernet or it can be just a phone call. So everything is there in the public domain. Still, how are you able to secure your communication? So um, Kirchhoff says that uh, a crypto system would remain secure even if everything about the system except the key is in public domain. And that's what exactly QKD is. Who protects it? The laws of physics protects it. One, one of them is Heisenberg's uncertainty and the other is no cloning. So if you look at Heisenberg's uncertainty, which is wave-particle duality. See now, if you uh, look at, uh, I have a, um, say, some generator which generates, uh, which, or a gun, maybe a bullet, which fires bullet with a large uh, angular, uh, uh, with a large angular dimension. So it's a very bad gun, basically. But it's a, a thing which I can say, I can relate to particle nature. So when I shoot them, and there are only two holes, in that wall, S1 and S2, as you can see in the screen. So you see that if I close one of the holes, the probability P1 is highest, right? So probability is the number of uh, bullets I can collect in that region. And if I close hole 1, S1, then P2 is the highest. So therefore, a classical physics tells you that if you open both the holes, P12 is equal to P1 plus P2. This is classical signature, okay? It cannot do more or less. But now if you suppose have a uh, uh, hose pipe and you're putting water waves into the holes, then it's actually interference. You can see the interference uh, waves, P12. And now here, please remember, P12 is not equal to P1 plus P2. Why? Because see, if you look at the uh, P12, the maximum in the center, it is not equal to P12, which is there in the bullets, right? No. And there are certain points where P1 is more in the bullets, while P1 is less when you have both the holes open. That means in water waves, they are interfering with each other. Now, same thing I can see with the electron. 
Well, since quantum mechanics deals with, uh, with very small particles, so photon, electrons, they behave similarly. So this is what uh, we are doing it with uh, electrons. Now this is a thought experiment. Um, so now if you put electrons coming out of it, you will always see the interference pattern. Okay. Now interference is, part is wave nature. The beauty is, if I try to find out from which hole the electron had entered, it will collapse to a classical signature. So you cannot disturb a quantum state. If you try to eavesdrop, if you try to clone it, if you try to find out what, where it is going, it will lose its quantum signature. So that is the trick. So now in, in cryptographic system, Alice and Bob is there. If, uh, if Bob observes the uh, interference pattern, he knows that there is nobody looking at the state. And if somebody looks at the state, it collapses to a classical signature. So it's very simple. See, again, one of the, uh, the speakers had said that it should be simple. Cryptography has to be simple. And this, the simplicity here is measurement perturbs the state. So no perturbation, no measurement done, no eavesdropping. So that is the beauty of quantum key distribution. No cloning. So here, uh, again, um, uh, Mr. Uh, Ram Levy had said that data breaches are actually data copying. So here is it, no cloning theorem, which tells you you cannot have a duplication of a state. So no duplication means maybe no uh, breaches. I don't know, but yes, of course, you cannot copy a quantum state. So now let us try to put this into um, understanding of how it works in a cryptographic system, particularly the thing, the QKD protocol, which we are doing. So the, uh, the, the security of our protocol is based on Heisenberg's uncertainty. Heisenberg's uncertainty tells you that you cannot measure two variables, conjugate variables simultaneously. Conjugate variables, wave and particle, there are mathematical explanations for that. I don't want to go into it. So here again, if I want to see light, so there will be some two uh, conjugate variables which we will not be able to measure. Now this, let us understand, we all know polarization, right? So it is the electric field vector, right, of the light. So let me say, uh, I have uh, a horizontal and a vertical polarization. They form one basis, which is called rectilinear basis, as you can see in the screen. Other basis is diagonal basis, which is uh, 45 degree and 135 degree. Okay. So now my 0 and 90 is my 0 and 1, provided you ask me question number 1. My diagonal states which is 45 and 30 degree, are my logical 0 and 1, provided you ask me question number 2. So I should, I'm preparing my quantum states based on this measure, this question, okay? So now, so this is the fundamental of, also of BB84 QKD, which is the fun, first QKD protocol in 1984. So now see the case 1. I know what question to ask. So I know the state, and I will ask the right question, I will get the right answer. Okay, for example, me and Sai Krishna, Sai Krishna knows what I have to send. So he will ask the right question and he will get the right answer, digital, because it has to be from optics to digital, no, zero and one. But now let us look at the second scenario, where he doesn't know what I have prepared. So that is what QKD is. The, send, the receiver will not know uh, what question to ask. He will randomly ask the question. So then we prepare it, uh, so of course, as you can see, based on his question, he will get a 0 and 1, but he doesn't know it's correct or uh, it's or not correct, okay? So this is a perturbation which the quantum mechanics brings in. Eavesdropper doesn't know what question to ask. So when he tries to look at the system, ask, look at the system means he's measuring a system. He doesn't know with what equipment he has to measure. What is the state? So that is the reason he in introduces uh, errors in the system. So the basic is, Asking right question, you will get right answer. Asking wrong question, you will get random answer. Asking wrong question or incorrect measurement damages the original state of the quantum system. Only Alice knows the right question. So if the other party tells me, hey, at one o'clock I asked this question, two o'clock I asked question number two, I will say question number one. I will say question at 3 o'clock, it's question number 4, question number 1 again. 
So the receiver knows, okay, I got this answers at this time, so these are my correct state. This is how the symmetric keys are being distributed. So now, a um, little more of physics. I think this is the last. Uh, see, now, how the single photon states? So we use weak, uh, weak states. So what we do is, we have digital pulses, optical pulses going in. The, the, the characteristic of this pulses is such that 90% of the time, it will be vacant. You don't know where I have kept the information. You will be detecting it randomly. So out of, say, million photons or single photons I am sending, you will be randomly detecting thousand of them. That will give you the base of having the raw key. From raw key, slowly and slowly, you will generate the final secure key. QKD is a business of growing secret key from a pre-shared small key. So it is a business of generating secure keys with eavesdropper in the channel. But if there is an eavesdropper trying to look at it, I know and I will abort. I will not use that key. So now when I'm, uh, it's all about quantum channel. So you have to also understand that with future technologies, with quantum memory and quantum computer, how it is safe. So there are different type of attack models only on the optical channel. So one of them is called incoherent attack. So incoherent attack means you're looking at one photon at a time. So we give eavesdropper the power of physics, all things which can be done by physics, he has that power and we model how much information can he get out of it. And then we bring that into our um, hashing algorithms called privacy amplification. So this is one which actually, so now you, if you have heard of quantum hacking, which is the most we can do with the current technology, so that comes under intercept and recent attack where you don't have a quantum memory and you're directly... So those attacks are actually, if you look at it, there are various assumptions and there are various access given to Eve. So it's good for uh, universities and uh, academic institutions to claim quantum hacking. But for a product, if you look at it, you actually know how to take care of it because you know the leakages point from where they have taken out the information. So that gives the advantage. So, um, so uh, as I said, effective monitoring of uh, the channel, we, there has to be different optical elements induced in the system to understand the quantum hackings, which has been done so far, and also effective monitoring. So these two are the key things which we use to safeguard our product from the current or present global standards of quantum hacking. So this is again a coherent attack. Coherent attack is the most general attack. So this gives you unconditional security. There are different QKD protocols now, all the QKD protocols may or may not give you um, robustness against coherent attack. It is extremely difficult to do and not possible for the next 50 years. But we still calibrate and find out if it is done, then what is the chances of information leakage? So you see, um, so first we asked, we showed the current situation and we asked that what can be done to, uh, to make the system more robust. If quantum uh, comes to the rescue, then what are the quantum advantages? Firstly, it does not depend upon uh, any mathematical algorithms. Then any measurement on the system, uh, you'll be able to detect it because of increased error rate in the system. No cloning doesn't allow you to copy it. And uh, there are superposition principle which ensures randomness of the key. So, so there is a beautiful example I want to share. So suppose a, a teacher asks a, a boy dreaming in the class about a mermaid. Okay. Then he's, he, the teacher says, what are you thinking? Tell me. Then uh, the boy says, a fish or a, or a girl. But he says that I'm seeing a fish, but when I'm telling you it's either a fish or a girl, because the moment you try to look at it, it collapses to one of these states. So that's what the superposition is. It's a wave function collapse. Then, um, of course, there's something called non-locality, Bell's inequality. So these are these algorithms uh, which can be used to generate device-independent quantum random numbers. So random numbers means you don't, uh, device independent means you don't have to trust the vendor. The quantum principles will tell you, there will be certain tests which tells you that uh, your uh, data is being monitored or not. It is called Bell's, violations of Bell's non-locality and there are QKD protocols and uh, we are also working towards the same direction to achieve device independent quantum cryptography. 
So um, then how do we do it actually? Transition from a theory to a product. So from theory to uh, an experiment bench to a product was done at QNU Labs. We have been uh, working on this for the past two years. So if you look at the QKD system, how it looks like. So what are the different uh, uh, algorithms which happens here? First of all, Alice and Bob's are authenticated. So when you're sending a solution, you also have to use inf uh, information theoretic algorithms for authentication. So you know that you're only talking to Bob. After that, there will be other algorithms like key shifting, because I said, told you, you'll be sending millions, but you'll be receiving thousands. So Bob tells you, I received at one o'clock, five o'clock. He doesn't tell the key. He only tells the timestamps. And based on that, they come at, or they derive at a random pre-shared key. Thereafter, they do error correction. Uh, nothing is ideal. There will be some errors induced. What is the right el uh, error correction algorithm? Because bit error rate may be 10 to the power minus uh, 22 or something, but quantum bit error rate is based on optics also. So error correction is needed. I had mentioned that if the error is more than the threshold, that means somebody is tampering with it. So you have to stop it. So bit error correction uh, is a very important place. Which may, which may decide that I may or may not generate a secure key. Then you have privacy amplification. You are sharing data in the, uh, in the public domain. You need to understand how much information is leaked and you have to compress it. And then key reconciliation. You have to validate whether the keys at the both ends are same or not without sharing the keys. So there are algorithms which does that. And finally, you have the final key uh, stored in the system. So there are different uh, algorithms of different, um, uh, yeah, it's it's a lot of work. It's a lot of a lot uh, more, much more than quantum physics, which goes into it to make an actual quantum uh, module platform. So now we have integrated our system with uh, a commercial encryptor and a router. So um, there we had uh, connected our system to the router. The router asks for the key. Um, so then a key ID is being sent and that goes through the internet to the other uh, module. Then the same key ID which has been sent, which does not form part of the key, is sent to the uh, Bob box or the second module and the key is taken or uh, being delivered to the second router and then they do the um, uh, encrypted uh, confidential um, uh, conversation, right? So this is one of the use cases we which we have practically implemented with a commercial partner. Then of course we have solution to um, multi-point QKD because you see that you are using a single photon, using a fiber, there will be distance, uh, uh, distance level also you have to think about. There's a trade-off distance versus how much keys you can generate at that distance. Uh, distance, along with what is the security parameter you are considering for that distance. That is also very important. So uh, if you want to increase the distance, so this can be done through a trusted node. So even China, they use quantum satellite, which is nothing but a flying trusted node. And uh, using that, you can uh, keep on increasing the distance. The, the key is being sent from uh, KAB1 to KAB, KAB2, and there is an algorithm which takes care of it, which is again, information theoretic secure. So now, where do I need this? Um, yeah, there are uh, corporate uh, customers, mobile banking, data centers, and uh, individual uh, data has to be stored. So there are different uh, applications which, once we can generate these two secure keys, it can be taken to different application scenarios also. So uh, for government, uh, we would uh, say that um, since every, if, if everything is within the radius of, uh, say, 100 kilometer, 80 to 100 kilometer, then we can actually do a, a, a QKD between say Sena Bhavan and the parliament and uh, uh, RBI and uh, so there are different uh, critical uh, uh, nodes which we can connect uh, through uh, QKD. And then see, because I told you that uh, there are three things, right? Uh, authentication, uh, um, key distribution and encryption, a robust, uh, forward secure crypto system should have information theoretic security for all three of them. We do have, in classical cryptography, we do have information theoretic secure solution for authentication, for encryption also, OTP. It's the only secure algorithm, only algorithm for, which gives you uh, information theoretic secure. 
and key, key, and key distribution can be done through QKD. So that gives you a very high uh, confidential structure. Now, why is it important today? See, there is something called harvest and decrypt later. That is what is important because anybody can uh, copy the data today and then they can uh, use it or decrypt it um, when quantum computers are available. It's already available in the cloud. But of course, I also agree that there will be different uh, logical qubits needed for uh, decoding it. But maybe some conversation between Modi and Trump is important for maybe it's 50 to 60 years. Nation's peace depends of, upon it. Um, and yeah, so this is, it's very crucial that we have to start working now. Even if you look at these standard, uh, standard bodies like uh, European Telecommunication Standard Institute, NIST, they all have given a mandate for transitioning to quantum safe means. Um, IBM will, all will, will be using quantum safe uh, protocols for uh, its encryption in cloud. And uh, quantum key distribution, it has many challenges. But we have a solution and we want to integrate it. Uh, actually this year, um, I will be also representing our uh, product in, in one of the uh, esteemed uh, globalization bodies like Etsy. They have done field trials for uh, world customers. And I want to go and propose that our product is ready and I want to integrate it with your system. And I want to see if how our system fares along with the other ones which are there in the market. So that is there. and. Uh, so, um, of course, carrying keys very, um, see, in defense and all, where uh, key, uh, confidentially is very, very important. They have trusted couriers. Like, you know, um, they will be sending the key with a military person, and then he has to in locked suitcases. So just imagine of the difficulties, right? And if the terrain is difficult. So uh, QKD can be used to that. Yes, uh, here I have given you a picture of how actually the thing works and the different hops. And uh, we also had a military person along with us, and he said that if it is compromised, the person can be killed also, uh, the, whoever is carrying it, if he compromises with the suitcase. Um, uh, yeah, at the same time, I have also seen those trunks of suitcases carrying in the trains, you know, the way it is being <laughs> carried. So, yeah, so actually QKD is one of the good solution. And we are also working with a, a defense company uh, for, you, for transporting the keys uh, as a courier for them. So this is, uh, yeah, I've got. So now then uh, point to point, a direct solution for Indian defense. It can also be worked out um, because it's a very crucial area. And, uh, and uh, we can develop it together how to uh, integrate the QKD for its application to its max maximum efficiency for defense. Yeah, and uh, data storage system, if uh, suppose, actually we also have worked with, uh, with, with we were one of the startups selected for uh, Cisco uh, startups, uh, cohort um, eight, we were one of the eight uh, startups selected, and we have uh, integrated our system with them and validated it. We also had uh, uh, spoken to the, 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 the cream cryptographers of the Cisco US team, and they questioned us for two consecutive sessions on our product. We have a client, one of the client is from Saudi, and he understands the importance of quantum key distribution. And he is from telecom company, and he wants to understand and build trust in QKD, what it is. How are you in carrying information on this? So he, uh, we are shipping this product. So actually, MT Karunakarun is with them right now. He is inspecting it uh, at Bangalore. And NetApp is another such, uh, NetApp and Samsung. So in NetApp, we had come up with this use case where we can do QKD to uh, transact uh, data from one, uh, one storage center to the other storage center. Or for example, Apple, where they push their old data towards to the cloud and uh, they have an on-site uh, uh, where they keep on pushing, where they have the current data. So those point-to-point -point can be done using QKD. Yeah, then uh, I told you about uh, uh, quantum random number generator, uh, so I will not discuss it any further because of time. Uh, yeah, because of superposition, it guarantees uh, randomness, true randomness. And that uh, entropy as a service can be used for various applications because we give them robust random numbers which can be used for different games in military or for OTP generation or in different uh, uh, applications of interest. Right? We have three products, Tropos, Amos, and Hodos. Tropos is a quantum random number generator. 
and it is based on uh, the next generation of Q uh, QRNG will be based on device independent, which means that you don't have to trust the vendor. You have the product and you will be able to see that something is getting eavesdropped or not. RMOS is a QKD, which I want to uh, show it to you. So I'm, I'll just quickly go through this. Hodos is the secure platform. So this is our product, um, the picture of our product. Armos, which uh, has uh, um, one of the modules. So there are two uh, of them needed for do, to do a QKD, right? Then um, for we had presented this case to the uh, uh, Ministry of Information, uh, where we had said that we'll be, uh, we can have a net Q new network of secrets, where we can install different QKD boxes. And then uh, there will be another key management layer to take the keys from this to the, uh, uh, to the key management server. And from there, it goes to different applications. So even that model, we have made our product ready even for looking at these applications. So this is exactly what we want to do, sir. We want to reach out to the common man. And um, this is one of the slides we are trying, we are pushing it to Ambani also, because we want each and every Indian to get the uh, quantum security, which uh, we have seen in this, um, which has been talked about in this session. And uh, so the layer of quantum security, this is called hybrid security. Uh, the, the classical umbrella is torn, and the, there's another layer of quantum security which protects it. So even if any adversary or national adversary has one of our secrets, the quantum umbrella is protecting it. So even if the classical algorithms are broken, yeah, the, the quantum umbrella will protect it. So it's my, uh, I'm urging you that let us all be uh, proactive and we need to go for this transition. Transition takes time. And if the transition and the shelf life is more than, uh, is more the time than what computer, quantum computer comes in, then our national secrets will all be in danger. So let us be proactive and start in uh, integrating. We already have a product, so I urge all the leaders to take up this uh, thing and uh, do the needful. I have a video, a one minute video, if you can please. So this is, uh, yeah, they have shown the sender first, uh, which has uh, an optical layer of a, a quantum demodulator and a single photon detector. So we are also making our own single photon detectors. We believe in indigenous products because it's for national security. This is a quantum channel which uh, simulates a 40 kilometer uh, uh, fi telecommunication fiber. And this is the Alice transmitter, which has the optical layer and the controlling electronics. This is the uh, optical uh, quantum channel, which goes into, and these are the Ethernet ports through which classical communi uh, communications are being done. There is a clock and uh, yeah, channel one and channel two. The, both the systems, 40 to 50 kilometers apart or 100 kilometers apart, have to be picosecond synchronized. So there are different challenges we have faced. So uh, this is a uh, uh, QNU uh, quantum channel box, and the quantum channel, then it goes to Bob. As I told you, it has a detector, and then that converts the uh, wave properties into digital symbols, and we generate the keys. 